Hello, my name is Kishwani. That's K E S H W A N I. Kishwani. We are here because we want to prepare for GMAT. We have been solving GMAT math problems out of this book here, the GMAT Official Guide 2021. If you do not own this book already, purchase one immediately. You're going to need it. Today, we will solve some data sufficiency problems that you will find on page number 214. Turn to it. Page number 214, number 1, 361, the very first one. Before we get into this thing, yesterday during the lecture, a word cropped up, a vocabulary word. The word was egalitarian. If you want to learn what that means and if you want to understand how it was used in the lecture, watch vocabulary videos, uh, improve your vocabulary. Just type in GMAT vocabulary words, day 30. The video will pop right up. Watch it and learn it. You will learn that word and some other words. Number 367 says, what is, what is the length of JL? And they give us a triangle, a triangle that looks something like this. I did not get my eraser thing ready. It's a three, three, it's a 30, 60, 90 triangle. A 30, 60, 90 triangle is something that you have to know how to deal with during the exam. It saves a lot of time and it does appear it does appear regularly in almost all the exam at least two or three times. So here's, here's what the triangle is. We are told that this is 30 degrees, we are told that this is 60 degrees and we are told this is 90 degrees. Oh, as a matter of fact, they don't tell us they don't tell us that this is 90, but of course we can deduce that it must be 90 if this is 30 and this is 60. And the question is how much is JL? It's J to L to K. And that's all it is. Is there anything that they tell us? Let's see what the first statement tells us. The first statement tells us that J to K, J to K is 10. J to K is 10. So I'm going to tell you now the mnemonic that I, that I use. The mnemonic that I use uh, to help me remember how to deal with the 30, 60, 90 triangle. Here's what you do. There is a 30 degree triangle, there is a 60 degree triangle, there is a 90 degree triangle. So I see three different, three, not triangle rather, angles. I see three different angles, 30, 60 and 90. So I write down 1, 2 and 3. This is just how I remember things. Okay, I start memorizing formula. This is how I, I see three different angles. So I can write down 1, 2, 3 and then you put a root sign on the last one. And then after that, all we have to do is arrange them in order. The smallest number, which is 1, will face the smallest angle. The smallest angle is here, so this, this side is going to be 1. 2 is the largest one because 3 is 1.7 approximately. 2 is the largest one, and therefore it will face the largest angle, right there. And root 3 will go here. All the sides are going to be in that proportion. And if we know that part, if you knew this part, this, pro this problem would have been done in 2 seconds. We are told that j to k is 10. Where is j to k? Very good, j to k is 10, which means this is 5 times 2. If this is 5 times 2, this has to be 5 times 1, and this has to be 5 times root 5. And the question is, what is the length of jl? Well, there you go, we just answered it, j to l, j, right here, right here. It can, it should be root 3 times 5, not root 5. 5 times, 2 times root, 5 times 2, 5 times 2, 5 times 1, and 5 times root 3. There you go. First statement by itself is quite enough. First statement by itself is quite enough. But that's what I use to remind myself what it is. Just write them in order and arrange them from the smallest to largest facing the triangle. Now that we are done with that part, we can no longer just use information. We know first statement is enough. But before we get to the second statement, we must erase this part. Because we cannot use that information obviously. Which means first statement was enough. A, D. B, C, E, which means answer cannot be B, C, or E. Let's see what the second statement tells us. Second statement tells us that K to L, K to L is 5. Well, there you go, again, the same exact thing. If K, if K to L is 5, that means everything, all, all the three sides are multiple of 5. If K to L is 5, that's 1 times 5, which means J to K is going to be 5 times root 3, same as before. Second statement is also enough by itself. The answer is D. 
It was a very simple and very straightforward problem only if you know your 30, 60, 90 triangle. Do you understand? And as I said, it appears regularly two or three times. What I mean by two or three times is uh, two or three questions in the exam. And that's a lot of, that's a lot of points. Make sure you know it. The same trick, the same trick applies in a 45, 45, 90 angle. I use the same thing. Here's 90, here's 45, and here's 45. I see two different kind of angles, 45 and 90. So I write down 1 and 2. Just like here, you write down 1, 2, and 3, and you put a root sign on the last one. Just like here, two different kind of angles. I put down 1 and 2, and then I put a root sign on top of it. And again, root 2 is bigger than 1, so it faces the 90 degrees. And these are both 1, and that's all. Don't have to memorize unnecessary formulas, it doesn't do any good. Even though it may be simple, but it doesn't do any good. 368. 368 says that we have a, a six-sided six-sided mosaic consisting of 24 triangular tiles. Question simply is what is the area of this mosaic? What is the area of this mosaic? So let's first draw the picture that they give us. Mnemonic, mnemonic simply means a memory device, something that you make up to help you remember something. And that's a mnemonic. It has the first letter silent, silent M in the beginning. Make sure you don't misspell it. And that is also a word that we have learned in our vocabulary lesson. I'm quickly trying to find it. If I can quickly find it. If not, then so be it. Just give me one second. Oh, there we go. Day number 90. Again, just type in GMAT vocabulary words. GMAT vocabulary words, day 90, the radio will pop right up. Learn that word and all the other words that we covered that word. Let's put down the six-sided mosaic that we have here, which looks something like this. As best as we can, okay? I'll do my very best. I hope I, I did the right job. Something this way. This should be here. That's it. And if you count, you will see that there are 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. 11. One, two, three, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, five. I have five on the top. One, two, three, four, five. There you go. Five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. There are twenty-four tiles. We're going to need twenty-four tiles to build a mosaic like that. The question is, what's the area of this mosaic? But before we can answer what's the area of this mosaic, we need to know something about the tiles. They haven't told anything at all about the tiles. So let's see what the first statement says. First statement says that each side, each side of the triangular tile is nine centimeter long. Now, as I always remind you, these questions are called data sufficiency. All we have to do here is to be able to tell whether or not we have enough data to be able to answer this question. We don't actually have to answer this question. We really don't care what the area of the mosaic is. We simply want to establish if this information is enough to be able to calculate the area of the mosaic if we had to. Let's see if we can do it or not. We know, we know that each of this triangular region, each of this triangular region has a side of nine centimeters. Well, I hope it's clear enough to you right away, immediately I thought, I hope it's clear enough for, to you that there is enough information. This is nine, this is 9, and this is 9. We want to find the area of this triangular region. It's very simple. Of course, the answer is yes. This statement by itself is enough because we can figure out the area of one triangle 
And if we can figure out the area of one triangle, all we have to do is multiply by 24 and we'll have the area of the triangular region. There are a couple of ways we can go about it. One way is to simply use the Pythagorean theorem, drop a, drop a perpendicular, this is going to be 90, and since, since they are all 9, this was 60 degrees, this was 60 degrees, and since we bisected it just now, this is going to be 30 degrees. There you go, we have another 30, 60, 90 triangle. In which case, this length from here to here, from here to here, it's just going to be four and a half. It's just going to be four and a half. And therefore, first statement by itself is enough because we can figure out the area. A, D, B, C, E. The answer cannot be B, C, or E. It has to be either A or D. Before I go into a second statement, and because I have already done it, I know the second statement is no good. Second statement doesn't give us anything at all. The answer here is going to be A. And because I know it ahead of time, let's do it out. Just for learning purposes, purely for learning purposes, if something like this appeared in the multiple choice problems. And there is no reason why something like this could not appear in multiple choice problems. This is a legitimate question. The question is very straightforward. We are given a picture like this. We are told that each triangle is 9 by 9 by 9. What is the area of this region? It's a perfectly legitimate question. We should, we should be able to answer it. Let's do it very quickly. Let's do it very quickly. We have two ways we can do it. We can either use 30, 60, 90 triangle that we just learned, which is we have three angles, 30, 60, 90, three different kind of angles, one, two, three, one, two, three. We put a root on the third one and we arrange them. This is the biggest one that goes up here, that goes up here, that, sh that should go up here. This is your two, and this is one, smallest one, which goes in front of 30, that's your one, and then root 3 will go up here, which is what we are interested in. We are interested in the height. The root, two, root 3 should go up here. Now watch what happens. So now we know they are multiple of 4.5. Of course they are multiple of 4.5 because that's how we are going to get 9. Because this, this side is 2, this side is 2, but in reality it is 9, which means we need to multiply by 4.5. Which means this height that we are interested in is root 3 times 4.5. Once we have the height, the area of the triangle is very simple. The base from here to here is 9. Base times height. Base is 9. Height we just found out is 4.5 times root 3. I'm going to write 4.5 as 9 over 2 times root 3. That's 4.5 times root 3. And it turns out the area of one tile is 81 root 3. If the area of one tile is 81 root 3, the area of the whole thing is going to be 24 times that amount, and that's what it is. We're not going to do it out. Another way we could have used it is to use the simple Pythagorean theorem. It's up to you. If you use a simple Pythagorean theorem, that also does not take very long. It should go very fast. We are trying to figure out this height. We know this is four and a half. We know this is four and a half because from here to here was four, and this is half of it. So we want to find the height. So nine squared, nine squared is going to equal h squared right here, plus four and a half squared, which I'm going to write that as nine, nine by two squared. Okay, stay with me in the story which means 81 equals h squared plus 81 over 4, which means h squared, bring the h squared here, equals, uh, rather, 81, h squared is going to stay, stay right there, and we're going to bring 81 over 4 over there, so it's 81 minus 81 over 4. Let's continue this on the top here, let's continue this part on the top here, which means h squared equals 4 times 81, 4 times 81 minus 81 over 4. Are you with me? Essentially, we're taking the common denominator. 4 times 81 minus 81 is just going to be 3 times 81 over 4. That's your h, h square rather, and therefore h is going to be square root of that. And when we take a square root of that, we get h is equal to square root of 3 times square root of 81 is 9, square root of 4 is this which is exactly what we had, which is exactly what we had before. I, I, we erased it, but that's exactly what we had before. Four and a half times root three, because this side was supposed to be root three, and the multiple of four and a half is the exact same thing. And once we have that, we can figure out the area of the whole thing. Let's look at second statement. Second statement is just nonsensical. It is just nonsensical because what they tell us is this. In the second statement, they tell us that the mosaic fits into mosaic fits into this does it say mosaic or does it say 
a tile. I look, give me a second, I'll look it up. Each mosaic can be put into a rectangular frame. Oh, mosaic can mosaic fits into a rectangle 40 centimeter wide. So let's draw a rectangle and watch what happens. So here's your rectangle, and what we are told is that the mosaic fits into it. And we are told that it is 40 centimeter wide. This this part right here is 40 centimeter. Do you see any problem? Of course you see the problem. Just because I know that it fits into this rectangular region doesn't tell me anything at all as to how to figure out the region. Even even if they had told us something like this, which I'm going to put it here. Even if you if even if you had a situation like this, we have a rectangular region which is 40, and we are told that the mosaic actually looks something like this. This is our mosaic. Even if it was something like this, this would still be not enough. This movement should still be not enough, even if it was touching the right thing, because we don't know what the length is. If we know that it fits exactly into this thing, then, we can, then, then there's a way to figure out the area of this thing very easily. We just find the area of rectangle and uh, area of the small three things and there is a way of doing it, I believe. But we don't have this thing. Second statement by itself is not enough. The answer is A to this problem. Okay. Of course in the real exam we don't make that much fuss. We simply look at it and say this is nonsense. We can't really figure out the area of this thing simply by knowing that it fits in a rectangle where one side is 40. Three hundred and sixty nine. Three hundred and sixty nine. Three hundred and sixty nine tells us that ABCD is a rectangle. Question is what is the ratio of area of triangle EDA over area of triangle EBC? And here's the here's the rectangle. Shall we? The first statement tells us that A to D, A to D is 4. A to D is 4. Is that enough you think for us to be able to figure out these two ratios, the area of this triangle EDA? EDA is this one right here. This triangle right here, EDA, and the area of EBC. E -B EBC. EBC makes no sense. EBC. A, B, C. Oh, that should have been B. Let me start again. Let me start again. This is not how the picture is given to us. This is not how the picture is given to us. Otherwise, it won't make any sense. It starts from here. Tradition, traditionally, we start naming them from this bottom left vertex, or vertex. But for some strange and inexplicable reason, they started naming it from here. See, these are the small thing, the small annoying things that you have to pay attention to in the exam because I'm always used to, this is my habit, always from start from here, A, B, C, D, but they want to start from there. And if you're not paying attention, it could cause a lot of confusion. So E, D, A, E, D, A, this, this triangle right here, and E, B, C, E, B, C, this triangle. We're looking for the ratio of these two. And, and they tell us, they tell us that the, the length of A, D is 4. We just know this length of this part. Obviously, we cannot answer that question. First statement by itself is not enough. A, D, B, C, E. First statement by itself is not enough. The answer cannot be A or D. It would have to be either B, C or E. Let's look at second statement. Well, and when we look at the second statement, this information no longer exists. Second statement tells us that A to E is 2. A to E is 2. And and uh, e to b e to b is 4 
Let's see what we can do. E to B is 4. Let's see what we can do on the top. I hope you are able to see immediately. I hope that you are able to see immediately that the height here, height here plays no role. It plays no role because they both have the same height. And since we're looking for the ratio of the two triangular region, when we put the area of one triangle on the top and the area of the other triangle on the bottom, the height is going to drop out, it's going to cancel out. It doesn't matter what the height is. We don't need to know the height. We don't need to know the height. As long as we know the basis, that is all we need. The second statement by itself is enough. The answer here is B. I'm going to show it to you here. We're going to do it out. So we're looking for the area of triangle EDA over the area of E. B, C. E, E, D, A is this one. E, D, A is simply one half base, which is going to be two times height, which is this right here. Now let's do the area of E, E, B, C. E, B, C. Now we're looking for, here's the base of this guy. So one half base which is 4 times height. There you go. You see? Of course we can figure out the of course we can figure out the ratio. Not only we can figure out the ratio, but none of this was necessary. None of this was necessary because things you should see right away. One thing we notice here is the height is the same. Height is the same and this guy has half the half the base of that guy. Which means the area of this triangle is twice as much as that one. Obviously we can figure out the ratio. That's all. As you can see, half drops out and h drops out. It's just 1 to 2. This, this triangle is has twice as much area as that triangle because they have the same height and this one has twice the base. The answer here is B. That was question number 369 and that was the last problem in that column. And since we do one column each time that we meet, even though there are only three problems in this column, we're not going to start a new column today. We're going to end here. We'll meet again tomorrow and we'll pick up the multiple choice problem from where we left off yesterday. You understand? I'll see you tomorrow. If you wish to get hold of me, you can reach me at keshwaniprep at icloud.com. Bye now.